Hello friends. Uh, today we're here with quite obviously, um, you know, a 2022 uh, collection overview, walkthrough, roundup, whatever you want to call it. Because I like to do these videos mainly as like a time keep for myself just to like see where I was at basically. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do today. And along the way, I'm going to answer some Q&A questions. Um, Keep it light, keep it fresh. So I got it on my laptop here on Notion. <laughs> Mainly gonna be just like flipping through. I probably won't be making that many comments on things. So just enjoy. First question, oh, obviously we're starting with BTS. This is my album slash DVD photo card binder. Um, the first question asked, are any collecting goals for 2023? Great question. Um, I never really have collecting goals, I feel like, for 2020, whatever. <laughs> I never am thinking that far ahead. These are on the way. Um, I don't know. I, I like to just vibe with my collections more than anything, especially now that I've chilled out on BTS. I'm not, like, back collecting a bunch. I really don't have a lot of goals. I mean, I'd like to, you know, where there are fillers, have them filled. Um... Mostly, you know, the casual answer, have fun, keep enjoying it, blah, blah, blah. Um, for my other group binder, where I'm just like casually collecting a bunch of groups, um, I want to make that like more aesthetic. So it's not really like a collecting goal, but more of like a presentation goal. As you guys have kind of seen on my um, channel, if you're not new here, uh, if you're new here, hi. Um, I do like my binders to look really nice. I don't think I go like crazy like decorating or anything but um yeah they all have like a certain finesse and order these are also on the way um so that's important to me and I'd like my other collections to feel as put together as this BTS binder and especially like my TXT binder which you'll see in a little bit there is a TXT comeback obviously in January so you know the goal is to collect what I want to collect for that fairly painlessly easily um, I find TXT fairly easy to collect, so I'm not like super worried about it, um, but that's always a good time. So yeah, I don't know, I guess that's kind of it. Um, as far as like goals in 2023 that are somewhat related to collecting in K-pop, um, I am planning a trip to Korea, hopefully for spring of 2023. Um, we've kind of, you know, agreed that we're doing it, um, but we just haven't made the moves yet, which might be a little late. I don't know. We did some research and like, when should you buy international tickets and things? And, you know, I think we're still like in an okay time frame. Um, but yeah, anyway. So going to Korea in 2023 will be very exciting. Um, yeah, okay, let's move on to the next question. What are your, actually, let me ask first. Let me ask you, what are your collecting goals for 2023? Um, I always like to hear about other people's goals who have like more structured ones, but um, I've never really been like that with my collection, um, personally. So let me know in the comments down below what your 2023 goals are in general. That being said, I am a huge goal setter for like life. So if you're at all curious about like my life goals in 2023, um, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I could talk about them in an upcoming video or something. Um, cause I do like goal setting and goal keeping and goal tracking and all that stuff. So yes, yes, yes. All right, next question. Um, okay, this is one of those questions that, you know, would have been a little bit more relevant a couple weeks ago. Um, thoughts on Indigo, favorite songs, favorite song on Indigo. I think I talked about this very briefly in a video recently, but um, yeah, Closer is my favorite. Or no, sorry, Change Part 2 followed by Closer. Um, I really like all of the songs on the album. Um, but yeah, those are my two faves. And I did share some of my thoughts on it that it did take me some time to like warm up to Indigo, but I obviously think it's, you know, extremely well done and I'm very, very proud of Mr. Nanju. Um, so yeah, this is all stuff that hasn't changed very much in my collection. Yeah, my album binder in general hasn't changed all that much. I don't think, I don't know, I should have gone back and watched my previous stuff. Here we are in Japanese. Um, Kate asked my current dream PC for each of my biases. Um, well, actually I can go back to the front of this binder in just a second and show you, but I would love the star hollow for each Namjoon and Hobie. Um, I'm really not back collecting much like, you know, fancy expensive stuff for, uh, for BTS anymore. I'm really satisfied with my collection and I'll just keep it, um, you know, the same going forward. Um, just like keeping it updated, I guess. 
Um, but I would love both of those um, Japanese fan club like renewal benefits. Uh, yeah, they would go up here. I have both of their Heart Hollow. Thank you so much, Esther. Um, and thank you, Lex, for helping me secure this one too. So it would be really nice to have those other two. I have no idea how I would set up this page in that circumstance, but we would figure that out. Um, those are my dream PCs for BTS. Um, I'm gonna move on to my other BTS binder and then I'll tell you about some of my other biases as well. The big one. All right, and this is everything else. I didn't have it in this binder. I got rid of a bunch of stuff. So actually this is probably a smaller collection than last year more refined, more tailored, curated, if you will. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and start flipping through this. Um, I mean, I obviously have a lot of biases in a lot of different groups, so I'm not gonna go through every single one of them. The other groups that I collect extensively are like TXT, which I don't have any dream PCs for them. I don't collect like POBs or anything like that. Um, so I guess my dreams <laughs> are to keep up with the TXT comeback. Those are my dream PCs. They're not out yet, but I would actually, okay, I would actually really like to pull a Subin signed um, postcard from the Temptation albums that are coming out at the end of next month. So sure, we'll say that that is my dream Subin card. <laughs> and then the other member, or the other bias I collect, you know, fairly extensively is Shiyun, um from Billy. I don't really have a dream card of hers. Um, there are a couple of her, like, ring by ring, ring x ring, whatever you want to call it. Um, I call it ring by ring personally. Um, like their debut era pre-order benefits slash fan sign cards that would be really cool to have, but I'm not actively trying to collect them. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I've gotten on the like the trail of her signed polas. Um, I don't want to purchase signed polas that I didn't personally win for events because I don't know. I mean, they're really cool and that would be fun but I basically am dreaming that for all future comebacks or whatever, um, I can get signed polos from her. So actually, <laughs> I haven't talked about this on my channel, but I just entered, like they had like a Christmas, Billy had a Christmas, like not even a fan sign, it was just like a special event. Um, and I decided to enter it because I was sick with the flu. These are the only cards I'm missing to like complete my BTS collection. I just don't wanna buy them. So if you have them, if you have Yoongi two or eight, just give them to me. I'll buy them off you. Come on. I know someone has them like socked away in a drawer somewhere collecting dust. Um, anyway, okay, Billy, I won this um, special event. It was a Christmas one. You could win like a Christmas pola and like a signed card from them or just like a regular signed pola. Um, and I won the regular signed pola. So um, that's being shipped to my Kaddy hopefully sometime soon and we'll see who I pull. So like obviously with my previous fan sign that I did with Billy, I submitted and applied um, for Shiyun's fan sign. Um, and so I obviously got her Polaroid, but with this one, it'll be a random member. So I obviously love all the members of Billy, so I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. Like if I happen to know someone that has Shiyun's and they want what I have, like maybe we could trade, but it also would be kind of cool to have any other member too. So. I don't even remember what the original question was, but, oh, dream, dream photo cards. Yeah, I think that kind of answers it. And then, yeah, I don't really extensively collect anyone else. So um, nothing sort of out of the ordinary, just like album photo cards for people. Um, yeah, let's see what the next question is. Kate asked what my favorite food was. <laughs> um, not really relevant to collecting, but um, I am a girl of simple pleasures. I am a girl who likes carbs. Um, so my favorite food, or I guess dish, we'll call it that because it's more than one item. Um, it's bread and butter, some good, some good bread, some good butter, preferably dipped into soup that I could eat that all day, every day. It's one of those things that like, even if I am full, if there is bread left on the table, I will still eat it. Um, this is like the only OT7 mini photo card set I have kept and probably will keep um, because six mustard meant a lot to me. It's a good time, good time. Uh, so yeah, that's my favorite food. I think followed by <laughs> white rice, <laughs> like white sushi rice with Maggie sauce. Uh, I could eat that all day, every day. I like more like flavored and specific foods too, but like if we're talking about favorite, like comfort, I will eat this always bread and butter and white rice. <laughs> um, 
I also really like pancakes. That used to be my favorite food. You know, you have like answers to those types of questions when you're in like school and stuff. If they're going to ask you that. Pancakes used to be my favorite. Um, or at least used to be my answer. I still love pancakes, but I find myself not really having them much anymore. Um, I love this binder because it's huge and fits so much in here. And I actually really like the color of it. But damn, this broken like thing is very annoying because I have to shepherd it over the edge. Um, okay, next question. Uh, Jane asked my favorite types of concepts. Um, I actually been thinking about this recently because, um, my boyfriend got into like backrooms lore videos. Don't get me started. I'm very intrigued by them too. And like, I got swept up in them because I do love some lore. So I don't know if it's considered like a concept, but I tend to like darker or quirky concepts and definitely some lore involved. So, I mean, I think that makes sense why I like the groups that I like. Um, BTS, TXT, Billy all have like pretty extensive lore. Um, they've all done some like darker concepts and Billy especially is like kind of quirky and strange and so is TXT actually. Um, I guess BTS had like a quirky stage too. Uh, Red Velvet for example, love their, I don't really know much about if they have lore or like a backstory really, but, um, I do love their quirkiness, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, those are my favorite types of concepts. Um, I also really appreciate like dance intensive kind of stuff. Again, I don't know if that's really considered a concept, kind of made me think of it because um, of this on manifesto film, but this is one of my favorite K-pop things ever, like this, this. Um, so I love a good dance moment um, where you can really like see how talented everyone is. Um, so again, I don't know if any of those are concepts, but that's my answer and I'm sticking with it. Um, I will also be putting Namjoon and Hobie's Speak Yourself bookmarks here. I will not be keeping the rest of OT7 just because I already have, I only have like, you know, the other two of them, but whatever. So if you want to buy those off me, let me know. Ooh, this is a good question. A group you hope tours next year. Um, I went to so many concerts this year that I don't want them to sound like a brag. I think that's like a really exciting thing about the world opening back up a little bit. Um, obviously I was very safe and wore masks and, you know, took precautions, um, at all of these concerts. So I don't want you to think I, you know, willy nilly went out into the world, but it was nice that groups were able to tour, that I was able to go see live music again. Um, because I really do love going to concerts. I was like a little scene emo kid back in the day. And I spent my entire like middle and high school years always at the masquerade here in Atlanta, for example, um, going to shows. Uh, and so it's fun to be back like in that era again, definitely took a break from it, but, um, now I go to K-pop concerts all the time. Anyway, so went and saw a bunch of really great shows this year. Um, there's lots of groups that I would love to see tour. I think my biggest regret tour wise this year is that I didn't get to see Stacy at K-Con Atlanta, um, because it was the same day as the 17 concert. Um, I went to the 17 concert with my friend Jen, um, and I got COVID at that concert, even though I was wearing a mask the entire time. Um, so I don't know, that seems a little rude. Maybe if I had gone and seen Stacy instead, I would have, wouldn't have gotten COVID. Um, so yeah, I would love to see Stacy. I don't know if they would go on tour. They have enough music to go on tour. Some of these other groups that I follow, um, that have debuted, you know, somewhat recently have like five songs, six songs, Edmix, Ive examples. Um, so they couldn't like put on a whole concert, I wouldn't think. Um, Stacy has, you know, a bunch of albums, a lot of music they could go on tour with. So would love to see Stacy, um, whether it be at like a K-Con or if they do their own little tour next year, would, will definitely be there. Um, obviously I'd love to see Billy. I think they're too, you know, too, I'm not, they're not like Nugu or whatever. Um, but they're just not big enough, I don't think, to go on like an overseas tour. I could see them doing like a showcase, but I feel like they would do that in like New York or LA or something like that. Um, and I would really want to go, but I don't know if that would actually happen. So that's, you know, really out there, but that would be cool. I'd love to see TXT again. TXT was great. Um, I have no thoughts about seeing BTS. Obviously that's not gonna happen, um, but that's okay. I got to see BTS so many times before before um, this current time. So I, I feel good about that. Um, Red Velvet would be really, really fun to go see on tour. I have said um, that if they do I'll go on tour, I would try to go to whatever stop like Lex, Lex Feinstein 
um, gets to go to because I just think that would be really fun to experience that with her. Um, what else? I'm gonna look at my groups over here. Yeah, no, I think those are the main ones. I think those are the main ones. Oh yeah, Twice. I would love to see Twice again. That was such a fun show. That's also one that I would love to go see like with a bunch of friends because I mean, everyone likes Twice, you know what I mean? So it'd be a, it could be a whole big thing. Um, and I definitely am more into Twice than when I saw them last year and I still had like a blast. Um, not last year, but I guess this year, earlier this year. Um, yeah. All right, we are reaching the end of this Everything Else binder. As you kind of saw, hopefully, it's a lot of merch, um, mostly Tor and Muster. Um, I downsized quite a lot of my merch things um, just because they were not bringing me joy. I think I really did decide that I love like photo card size things. I love eight, eight pocket size things like mini tour PCs. Um, and album cards, and that's just what I should stick to. Okay, we're gonna get the TXT binder out. I'll close this one up and we'll go to TXT. This binder has actually become TXT and twice, just how things worked out. Um, they both start with T. I don't know if that was my justification. Um, yeah, TXT is probably one of my favorite collections because I find them enjoyable to collect and um, I think my setup is really nice. I, I really enjoy it. Oh, that's relevant. Jane asked favorite concert this year. Um, I actually, with my friend, uh, Jen, we do a um, spreadsheet of all of the K-pop releases for the year. Um, this is our second year doing it, but our first year like doing it really intensely, um, where we like rate and review every single, basically like title track music video that comes out. Um, so that's fun. And then recently we added in, this is the one card that I need. I was about to buy it last night, but yeah, we need it. Um, we started a sheet in that spreadsheet um, for the concerts we went to this year, because we went to most of those concerts together, because she's local with me in Atlanta. Um, and so my top three, after you know extensive ranking and rating, um, were Hobie Palooza at Lollapalooza, obviously. Um, that was just like such a fun trip and experience, and I'm so glad that I did it. The performance was amazing. I still haven't rewatched it, because I think it'll Hurt my heart a little bit. I have this photo card. It's just um, on my shelves. Um, yeah, Hobie Palooza, um, TXT in Dallas. I saw them in both Atlanta and Dallas, and both shows were great. But the Dallas experience was just a little bit better. We had better better seats, um, and yeah, we didn't get there ungodly early like we did in Atlanta and wait outside in the heat and almost like die. <laughs> Um, so yeah, overall the experience was a little bit better and here's where I'm going to have uh, stuff for the next comeback. Uh, and then BTS in Las Vegas, but that was closely followed by twice in Atlanta. Um, this is just all my extra like inclusions and stuff for TXT. This is my section that I'm like least happy with when it comes to TXT. I just don't really know what to do with it. Like I was saying, like larger inclusions are just hard to make look great in my opinion oh my god the trash truck it's so loud we're just gonna ignore it everybody just ignore it um so yeah those are my favorite shows the las vegas show was kind of funny because when we went to the la shows we went to all four of them um and i got to go see soundcheck on the last night and jen my friend wasn't able to um just like how the tickets worked out so we said if we can get and here's twice if we can get sound check, gold sound check tickets to Las Vegas, we'll go. Um, so we tried ticketing. Um, actually, I was at a different concert that day, so she did all the ticketing. Um, and we didn't get gold sound check. And then spur of the moment, she was like, well, just buy tickets anyway. <laughs> and so we said, we're not going unless we get gold sound check. And then we decided to go. Um, we ended up going to the live play as well. because We were like, we're already in town. We might as well. Um, if we're there for one of the shows. And it was really, really fun. Um, I'm glad that we did that. So yeah, good stuff. Um, but yeah, lots of concerts this year. I saw Twice, I saw Itzy, I saw Seventeen, I saw Eric Nam. Um, who else? I saw Lizzie McAlpine twice. Um, BTS, obviously. TXT, obviously. I feel like there's some I'm forgetting, but they were all really great. Love live music. The only concert tickets I have for next year are Lizzie and Alpine tickets, but I think that's it. I think I'm gonna get rid of my Nyon collection. I love Nyon and this album is so great, but 
I have no nice way of storing it and it's literally like just sitting here at the back of this twice binder. So I might be throwing that up on Macari soon. But there was TXT and twice. Let's move on to Billy and Stacy. All right, the next set of questions are all like kind of related in that they're like wrapping up the year and artist of the year, song of the year, my Spotify wrapped, all that stuff. Um, we'll look at the Billy and Stacy collection while we do that. Um, fitting because my artist of the year, um, both like what I would claim my artist of the year as well as my Spotify like most listened to artist was Billy, surprise, surprise. Um, I believe it was, oh, you know what, I should have pulled a picture of this up. Okay, I don't quite remember the order, but it's definitely Billy, <laughs> I think it's Billy, TXT, BTS, J-Hope, and Lizzie McAlpine. I'm pretty sure it was those five. I don't remember the exact order, but Billy was definitely number one. Um, my top five songs were More, um, Young Love, sorry, More, J-Hope, um, Young Love by Stacy, Moon Palace, and A Sign Anonymous by Billy, and then Ring Ring by Billy. Um, yeah. I mean, I found Billy January something of 2022, this year. Um, like, I knew of them when they debuted because I, like, heard about them, but I didn't, like, get into their music until January. And yeah, they just really dominated uh, my thoughts and <laughs> feelings for the year. I do agree, though, that Song of the Year is more that album in general was... Jack in the Box, man, it... It hit me hard. It's so, so good. Um, here's my signed polo. It's blocked off so that no one can copy it. Um, here's all the stuff I'm still waiting on for Billy. <laughs> yeah, still not done with this album, which is very funny considering how many like group orders and stuff I joined. Other than that, when it comes to Spotify wrapped, um, I don't actually, this is gonna sound stupid, I don't listen to music that frequently. So my listening numbers, I think were only like, 11,000 minutes or maybe even less than that. I can't remember. A word of note about the Stacy binder is that I think I am going to be moving them into an A5 wide binder here soon. And by I think I am, I mean, I know I am. I'm just waiting on the stuff to come in, which is unfortunate because I made all of these really cute dividers that have like my bias line on the front and then the rest of the girls on the back. So let's all appreciate them together because they will probably not live on. Maybe I could trim them down for like an A5 wide, but I don't know. It's so cute. All right, we just got two questions left. Um, one is <laughs> obviously Lex. She asked to rank the new Red Velvet comeback. Um, the new Red Velvet comeback I thought was really great. I think it grew on me more than anything. I wasn't like wowed immediately when I listened to it for the first time, but every time I go back and listen to it now, I'm like, oh yeah, this song's really good. Oh yeah, this song's really good. <laughs> Um, I think my favorite on the album is Bye Bye and then On a Ride, um, then probably Birthday and then probably Celebrate and then I literally cannot remember the name of the last song on the album. So I'm going to go ahead and put it at the bottom because maybe it didn't make that much of an impression on me. Um, but it's, it's a really good album all in all. I think the packaging and stuff, as always, Red Velvet's always killing that kind of thing. Um, in the back of here, I still have some of the bigger stuff that, from groups that I've moved to A5 because I really like having them in like a one pocket page. So they kind of just hang out here. Um, yeah, I think it was a great comeback. Uh, I think Red Velvet makes excellent music kind of like always. So uh, it was fun, it was fun. I felt like Birthday was like so extremely Red Velvet, it's not even funny kind of thing. It's like if an AI asked you to make a Red Velvet song. <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. All right, and last but not least, we will go through my A5 wide. This is the least organized, um, kind of like I was talking about. There's a lot of like aesthetic work I wanna do in here. Um, so disregard that, but uh, I actually really, I resisted the A5s for so long. And now that I have this wide in my life, I'm already moving another collection in there, Stacy, like I mentioned. So um, yeah, we will go through this. And the last question is, what are some of your favorite 2022 memories collecting and in life? Um, we'll talk about collecting first. Um, I think my highlight was winning a fan sign. Since I got into K-pop like later than, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> it was obviously very, very well established. And like my main group at the time, BTS, was obviously very well established. So like there was no way I was ever gonna win like a fan sign or something with them. Um, so once I started getting into like more rookie groups and new groups and, and things like that, um, it was like really exciting to me that I'd be able to like, first of all, be there from the beginning of a group like Billy and like, you know, have 
reasonable odds um, to win a fan sign with them. So that was really fun. And it's also one of those things that I kept telling myself like, oh no, like I could never do that. I'd be too like, I don't know, embarrassed or whatever to, to meet someone, but um, it ended up being really fun. And I'm glad that I did it and it started um, an obsession. So there's that. That's definitely my highlight of my collection this year. Um, as far as life, um, like I mentioned, I went to a lot of concerts this year. That was really excellent to be able to do. Um, I traveled a good bit, which was fun. I saw friends and family a lot, which was nice. I think in general this year just felt not like a retor return to normal. I don't think we'll ever be back to normal post COVID. Um, but it felt like I was like finding my stride in like, you know, the post COVID era, whatever we want to call it. So yeah, that's it. A lot of random assorted collections back here. Um, I really like this binder because I feel like it's like the least pressure ever. It's like, ooh, a pretty card that I found. Let's let's stick it in here. <laughs> I think the only two collections where I like actively collect one one member only are um, Kepler and uh, N Mix, and the rest I really do like kind of keep my pulls and things like that. And that's just really fun because I definitely form. <laughs> An emotional attachment to the things that I pull out of albums. So I also think I might show like a really quick look at my shelves. All right, the lighting is a little terrible, but here's a quick overview of my little collection. We've got BTS here, sort of color coded. Got a lot of white and black albums, which is nice. Then we've got more BTS, some DVDs and things like that. And then down here is where I'm gonna be putting um, solo stuff. That needs work, but obviously it's gonna fill up. Then I've got pretty much everyone else over here. Got my two main girl groups, Billy and Stacy. This is my signed album, but I need to figure out a better way to display it because the sign is inside. Um, and then we've got TXT. This little Subin's falling. Isn't he cute? We've got Red Velvet and Twice. This is falling over. And then everyone else. <laughs> this is also falling over, but you get the idea. Isn't it nice? All right, that was my album collection. These were all my photo cards. Um, I hope this was, uh, you know, somewhat entertaining. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me this year. Um, as always, I have a very great time just like sharing uh, on YouTube because I like to document and look back on, on things myself. Um, so more than anything, it's for me. <laughs> Go ahead and leave down below, you know, your thoughts about 2022, what you're looking forward to in 2023. I love that kind of thing. Um, and I'd love to start, you know, a little discussion in the comments. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see, you know, what I get up to in 2023. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.